Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new tuner. Now those are words that I've said here on the channel quite a few times in the last couple of months. That company has been putting out some brand new hardware for the next generation quite a lot recently and a lot of these devices are going to be with us for the next two to three years at the very least. But of all of the devices that I've talked about so far, this is one that not only did I speak about at the start of the year, but also could well be the most interesting of the lot. This is the QGD1602P. I know, catchy name, right? But stick with me because this device has got so much hardware inside, I don't even know where to start. I mean, again, right now in front of me, I've got all the lists of specifications that I'm going to talk about during this video, and I genuinely don't know which one I'm finding the most interesting. But let's push forward and start talking about this. Now, this is the brand new Guardian. Now, the older generation Guardian, which is still available, not even a year old, and then this is not to replace that, was the QGD1600P. That device was an Intel Celeron powered uh, PoE managed switch that was combined with an ads in a single chassis in a rack mount kind of form but really low level half depth rack mount form and it was a combined network switch and NAS in a single device with parallel running systems that were integrated internally so you could control the switch from within the NAS as well as access both remotely via the network and the internet. It gave you all of the functionality of a NAS with HDMI, graphical capabilities, uh, virtual machines and you know direct interfacing with the NAS via its own dedicated LAN ports but on top of that you also had a power over ethernet switch bunged on the side at 380 watts and it in this single chassis gave you managed networks within a single device it was a great idea and done very very well so far and this device with its own parallel control and own parallel um shut down and boot up meant that you didn't have to have both running at the same time but they were in a single contained environment and reducing a number of latency areas as well as um, being more efficient with the budgets of most small business users now as good as that was this new device that we talked about right at the start of the year is not so much the follow-up, but it is a new way of doing it. It's less graphically um, optimized, far more geared towards business users, a much higher tier. This is what I would say the next business tier up. If the previous generation was aimed at SMB, you know, your medium businesses, this new generation has got larger targets in its sights. Now, this device arrives um, with an Intel Deviton CPU or Denverton, which is also an Atom. So if, if this may be an area where a lot of you go, no, nah, I'm good, I'm checking out. But stay with me. Uh, it arrives with one of two CPUs. You can either go for the quad-core CPU, which is the C3758, which is a four-core 2.2 gigahertz processor, 64-bit, and that's an x86-based processor, or you can go for an 8-core version, the C3, I think that's the C3758, with the quad-core being the C3558. Now, these two CPUs in 4 and 8 cores, depending on which one you go for, both support um, a myriad of functionality. They both support AES NI level of encryption. They both uh, enjoy quite, um, you know, quite impressive performance thresholds with the ports that I'm going to talk about later on. They have both got support of transcoding built into them, although 4K isn't really on the table um, with these CPUs. And on top of that, both of these processors open the door to DDR4 memory. Now, there are two memory slots inside, uh, and with this uh, device supporting up to 64 gig of DDR4 memory. I believe the default models are gonna arrive with four or eight gig, but I'll have to double check that at launch. But that's kind of the NAS brain. There is a completely separate dedicated switch controller, which I'm sure all this information is on screen. But what's really interesting is the PoE switch and indeed the network capabilities of the NAS side in this single chassis. Now, it's PoE uh, arriving in two versions based on that CPU. There's a 380 watt version and a 220 watt version. There are four PoE++ ports which allow up to 90 watts per port with the re remaining 12 PoE ports giving up to 30 watts per, per port. You can't really exceed that overall maximum. Where things get interesting is the uh, is the overall specifications of both the NAS and that switch. <clears throat> so, straight off the bat, we've got one GBE port, which is nice. We've got eight one gigabit Ethernet ports. Good, good, good. RJ45, what else you got? Well, we've got eight 2.5 GBE ports, which is still pretty good. On top of that, you've got two 5 GBE ports, 
and to 10 GBE SFP port. This has got the lot. And although it's dropped that HDMI port, it is far more swinging and supportive of those increased gigabit and plus gigabit networks, both in the PoE and everything, but the 5GBE and the 10GBE SFP. Um, but also, it is expandable in a number of other ways, not just in network capabilities or all the other devices in your network and how they interact with the NAS, but also internally. This switch can be evolved in a number of ways throughout its lifespan. Now, as mentioned, it is a parallel NAS and switch system, much like the Guardian. It arrives with QTS 4.4.2 currently um, on the NAS side and QU switch and QU WAN, all possible that on the switch side of things and all of these two systems working together now we've talked about um sd wan in previous videos well we've talked about how these days with a lot of people using voip and remote access systems and particularly now during you know self-isolation working remotely in covid and stuff like that there's been an enormous boom in the importance and relevance of sd wan so a product like this is very very interesting indeed and it's probably the main reason we've talked about sd wan quite a lot also on top of that with uh, internet capabilities and um, plus gigabit networks becoming far more affordable. A solution that adopts a number of these different connections all in a single chassis while including storage capabilities and all of those NAS supported options as well is very interesting too. And with virtualization within both the NAS side of virtualization station and that four and eight core processor or on the switch side, letting you install things like PF Sense and um, those other applications we've talked about in the previous video and that range of virtual appliances for routers and switch and you know uh, those intelligent firewall programs freeware and other the range of supported virtual machines in that vm uploader and the vm uh, maker uh, vm uh, uh, porter if you will um on this switch is all possible on this device it's a huge a huge range of the vm installers uh, supported applications now in 2020 now moving forward let's talk about traditional storage within a nas much like the guardian before it the 1600p the 1602p arrives with two sata ssd bays which is all fair and well but it also arrives with two nvme bays that's cool so you've got the normal two and a half inch storage you can go for two and a half inch hard drives if you choose you can go for ssd fantastic but you've also got those nvme bays so you've got those for caching if you choose or you utilize them for raw storage how are you going to interact with them well there's two pcie gen 3 times two slots this means the adoption of numerous qm2 upgrade cards to increase the ports to increase the caching and storage options or introduce wireless capabilities and make yourself a truly intelligent um, controllable switch plus um, router system with the NAS combined inside. I talk about router capabilities um, you guys uh, on the live video from Taiwan uh, QNAP's Taiwan live channel that went live a few hours ago they talked about how it will support that AC2600 wireless card so if you include that card and the four antenna dock that arrives with it it's quite an affordable card you have got a private wireless network within your private managed network switch and the private NAS all combined together and you better believe there is no way um, that QNAP is not considering a Wi-Fi 6 card if they haven't already got one out there it's only because they're working on one right now and I fully anticipate something like that happening before the end of the year so imagine this device with its 2.5 GBE ports, its 5 GBE ports, its 10 GBE ports, and that pile of 1 GBE ports, PoE cameras, PoE speakers, PoE security doors and more in your business environment, all being managed by the one device, and then introducing a wireless component where you have got a Wi-Fi 6 for all your 2.5 GBE devices or standard um, dual band um, 802.11ac or AN in your own environment. This is a very, very hardware capable device and don't get me wrong i'm not doing justice to a lot of the software capabilities such as utilizing this device for surveillance with qvr pro i'm sure that cpu and the right memory are going to put out 40 cameras without any difficulty and eight camera licenses utilizing this for virtualization of both the vm installer being utilized for those router and network appliances as well as 
standard Windows, uh, Linux VMs and more capable on the NAS side. On top of that, you've got hybrid backup sync to manage the backup and synchronization of all of the devices on that one single network, as well as with cloud sources and locally as well over those USB ports on the devices got USB 3s. On top of that, you have got things like virtual JBOD and hybrid mount that we've discussed before that will allow you to make um, storage from alternate sources um, such as cloud or other NASes locally accessible and integrated with the applications within your device. And with QVR Pro now introducing more AI powered um, services which may or may not be supported on this device, we'll have to double check the power of that. Maybe the 8 core CPU will give you enough oomph, although it's not embedded graphics. There's still lots of uh, functionality in their surveillance platform, which this device is going to be able to take advantage of. And of course, for you home users, although this is definitely not geared towards you guys, this device will arrive with a whole myriad of supported services in first and third party for things like QMaggie, Multimedia Console, Photo, Video, Music Station, and all of the other applications from QNAP. So there are loads of things within this device. It's probably one of the main reasons with its bolting on of all of these modern hardware means and letting the software take advantage of it, why I do think the QGD1602P might well be one of the most exciting devices of this year. It's a little bit alternative, it's a little bit out there, and I know a number of you aren't hugely convinced by the idea of a combined NAS and Switch in one device, but a lot of you were convinced because you went ahead and bought the other one. Do let me know what you guys think in the comments. Go to the links in the description to take you through to span.com, NAS Compare, and more to learn more, and we will update those pages as much as possible. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you did, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.